Shields. Picture the perfect video game. This, this isn't it. This is choppy and sloppy, unimaginative and unfair, a mix of genuinely stupid and naive to the point of idiocy. Earth Defense Force 5, which I'm using here to represent the entire EDF, GDF and Monster Attack series, isn't the perfect video game. It's simplistic and a bit of a mess at times. It's never going to win any major awards. It's never going to be the game, the series, that dominates the discourse online. History shows us it's barely even going to change over the years. And yet, Earth Defense Force is the perfect series. It doesn't pretend to be anything it isn't. It doesn't even try to be anything different, discounting the versions of the game not developed by series creator Sandlot, at least. You can play Monster Attack on PS2 and know exactly what you need to do in Earth Defense Force 5 on PS4, and I'm sure that'll be the same when EDF 6 hits on PS5 in 2022. EDF knows what it is, it knows its place, it sticks in its lane, and while that's not always the best way to be, in the case of shooting giant ants in their giant faces, it works. It makes sense. It makes the series comfortable, welcoming, easy to love, and even easier to keep on loving. It's also... The why and how of all of this is just as straightforward as the series itself. EDF is a series about stopping an alien invasion. You're a soldier with some guns, sometimes in a different class or specialism, sometimes with a tank or helicopter or other bit of kit. Sometimes you have compatriots along for the ride, sometimes you're by yourself. And every single time you're facing off against gigantic enemies. Ants, spiders, UFOs, frogmen with cannons, robots, wasps. Numbering in the dozens, the hundreds, the thousands. Sometimes you face off against a lone kaiju alike as a special treat, but the main thrust is you versus an overwhelming mass of aggression. That's it. That's your concern. You're under attack, so you fight back. There are civilians sometimes, doesn't matter if they die. There are entire cities you can level, but it makes no difference if the buildings come through unscathed or not. Reports come in over the radio of other invasion forces around the world, of the struggles and battles and sheer weight of oppression coming down on the planet, but none of it matters outside of the mission you have right in front of you. And the mission you have is, almost always, to kill every mother fragging thing that isn't human in any given level. That, that is it. That is your concern. Across hundreds, literally over 500 missions. I talk about brain-off fun a lot when it comes to video games, and it's something I genuinely think is very important. Not just in gaming, but in any form of entertainment. I love to be made to think, to analyse and dissect, to be challenged on my views and embedded feelings about deep-seated, important matters. I love entertainment that doesn't shy away from the stuff that matters in the world, that is impactful and thoughtful and brave and worthy. Art and philosophy expressed through entertainment is one of the greatest things humanity has collectively come up with since we emerged from the primordial sludge. But that worthiness tends to dominate the chatter, where the attention is focused, and there's a dearth when it comes to highlighting and celebrating the things that give themselves one simple job, that do it well, and that suffer no pretension beyond offering you the chance to just be entertained. No higher aims, no delusions of grandeur. EDF is brain-off fun in the absolute purest form. You can bring strategy to some levels if you want, but the truth of it is, it's all the same. It's always the same approach. Run up to things, get mobbed, spray and pray till you're the last thing moving. I was hoping to get some footage to illustrate this point while recording for this video, but the simple fact is the majority of what you play is that example. You are always being overwhelmed, usually by hundreds of enemy units, but sometimes by the sheer power and durability of a lone gigantic enemy, whether it's a Godzilla ripoff or the mothership slash disco ball terrorizing the globe. You are never on the front foot, so you are always spraying and praying, and you usually are the last thing moving. Because that's the other area in which EDF nails things. It can be hard, and it can definitely be frustrating and unfair, but generally speaking, this isn't a series that relies heavily on the challenge it presents. 
It's about two things, the spectacle and the power trip. Even with chugging performance and technical issues across the entire series, there's always been a wow factor in the sheer number of nasties you have to blast in EDF. There's always been spectacle. And there's always been the power trip too, because these hundreds, thousands of enemies are rarely strong enough to stand up to any sustained attack, which is the very reason these mobs of hundreds and thousands are needed to begin with. It's smart dom design, making a careful and considered decision based around the fact you want to make something basic also something that's fun. And yeah, it works. The series has had some pivots over the years, though these tweaks to the formula have all been handled by studios other than Creator Sandlot. EDF Insect Armageddon saw the American studio Vicious Cycle taking over development duties and making a worse version of the game with far more stable technical performance. EDF Iron Rain was another spin-off, this time from Japanese Team Ukes, with a more serious tone and… oh, well, nice. The more recent World Brothers, again from Ukes, only really veered from the traditional recipe when it came to visual style, being pretty much a standard EDF game just with blocky voxel characters and aliens. Global Defense Force Tactics, meanwhile, came from Japanese studio Think Arts and was like a blend of EDF and Advance Wars, but with most of the fun taken out. But who cares about those? Except for World Brothers, they're nothing you need to bother your pretty little brain with, because they're not the pure, so pure activity of rolling around a lot while shooting hundreds, nay thousands of big bad bastards in the butt. And face. That pure Sandlot strain of EDF is where I've personally got my kicks from for... 18 years. Is there any chance, Time, that you might just give me a bit of a break, you absolute walloper? Well, no need to dwell, because if we do another 18 years, we'll probably pass in another blink of the eye. But as long as that pure, uncut strain of EDF maintains throughout the blink, I'll be happy. It's the best kind of big and dumb, a mix of self-aware, but legitimately keeping itself in the realms of tacky, somewhere you can always see the seams. It's Troma by way of giant monster destroying video games. It's listening to Eiffel 65 just to laugh about the past being terrible, then tapping along to a Europop banger. Actually, that's it. EDF is Euro trash. Not the concept of, but the once wonderful, now dead Channel 4 series that embraced its sincere tossness and ended up far greater than the sum of its parts. Also, it had nudie ladies on it. E EDF doesn't have that. EDF is self-aware dumb, self-aware lowest common denominator, self-aware trashy, self-aware to its core. And that to me is why it will always remain a special series. EDF knows damn well what it's doing, and that's so much more than can be said for any number of multi-million dollar productions from international mega studios with development spread across hundreds of people around the world handling design decisions made via committee. For all its flaws, its sameness, its inability to really veer from the path it originally set out to follow nearly 20 years ago, at least Sandlot's Earth Defense Force is honest. And that honesty is what makes EDF the perfect video game. As always, thank you to the fine patrons over on Patreon who support me at the Fiverr or above tier. You're a good gang. I'd go into battle against giant insects alongside you. And big, big thanks to my higher tier patrons, who I would also go into battle alongside, but considering your likely officer class, I'd assume you'd actually be back at the base handling the plans to send off thousands of people to die in horrible circumstances. <laughs> oh well. Paintball Magazine PBM. Lola Osman. Takara Hoshi. You can find a link to my Patreon below. There's early access to videos, bloopers, random chat, and more, all available if you contribute anything, really. I'm off to see how the church around the corner would stand up to a sustained rocket launcher attack, just in case I see horrid leaping spiders coming over the horizon. It's. 
Bye. Our friends were all killed yesterday, as were our families. Today we may not make it facing these atrocities. We'll never drop our banner despite our casualties.